Ayo, Zenpuck here. Um, another day, another day without working for the man. <laughs> All right, today's topic uh, is a real simple one, right? I, I want to give you my opinion on this whole, like, uh, financial advice on an index card. Uh, not trend, I suppose this is... Uh, a, a a a point of view that says hey all you need is like these simple rules right for i i'm assuming this is aimed at most people right relatively normal people and i find this kind of simplification of a topic like financial literacy and independence misleading right are these rules all good because if if it's a bunch of advice that could be condensed it condensed down to a postcard size or an index card right then i assume that it should be applicable to everyone right um, and i don't find this to be to be true right now let me be clear as i go down the list there will be some items that i i do agree with uh, what i'm trying to say is that uh because this is such a small con condensation or summary of this entire field you would think that, you know, whatever is on the post postcard should uh, be applicable to the vast majority of people. That's the part that I have a problem with, right? Let's go point by point. First one says, max your 401k or equivalent employee contribution. Um, uh, I would call this one mostly true, but not relevant for everyone, okay? Uh, Case in point, me. Okay, I, I had a 16-year corporate career, and I only contributed to my 401k uh, in the last eight. All throughout my 20s, I just, you know, my employer didn't have a match. So why then would I put, uh, you know, at the time, a good percentage of my savings into a investment vehicle that I, you know, can't access until I'm 65 or 67 or 70, who, whoever knows what the retirement age will be by the time I get there, right? So keep that in mind, especially if you're interested in, in earlier retirement, okay? You, you can't touch that money without penalty uh, until later on in life. Plus, because the uh, 401k, traditional 401k, are done with pre-tax money, you know, it's great, right? It looks great in your account, but it'll make you feel like you actually have more money than you actually have, Okay? Uh, because when you take it out, you're going to have to pay penalties if you're not, you know, a senior citizen already. So this first point already, eh, it's true, it's relevant for the majority of the people out there, but I'm trying to talk to you guys like you're adults, and, you know, you have a working brain, right? You can understand there's nuances to, the, to this, right? But this particular item just does not, you know, it, 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 it just doesn't work by itself, okay? Now, to be clear, if you have a match, you should certainly put as much money as, as, you, as you can to, to uh, hit your employer's match because then it's actually free money that you're turning down, okay? Um, so that's number one. Number two says buy in, uh, inexpensive, well-diversified mutual funds such as Vanguard Target 20XX funds. That's reasonable advice, okay? Uh, and I would say that's relevant and reasonable advice for 99% of people out there, okay? Most people are just not meant to do anything but buy index funds. Uh, if you don't know why that's the case, I mean, there's a ton of research you could read, uh, but I, I think that's the consensus, right? Even amongst real uh, financial gurus, right? Like any, anybody from Warren Buffett on down says that, so I think that can be trusted. Number three, never buy or sell individual security. The person on the other side of the table knows more than you do about this stuff. Okay, don't, don't like this at all. This is bullshit, okay? You can uh, buy and sell individual securities, okay? Uh, maybe you shouldn't, but you can. And uh, to me, sometimes it's exciting, right? Like people on Robinhood do that all the time. There's a reason why... It excites us, okay? Um, I don't have a problem with people picking their own stocks as long as you do your homework, okay? And this, the, the, the rest of the statement that says the person on the other side of the table knows more than you is absolutely false, okay? They may know more than you, okay? Just because someone knows more information than you, it doesn't mean that they aren't prone to the same emotional type of decision-making, right, that all stock traders feel. Okay? Having more information doesn't imply that they will make better decisions than you. Okay? That's complete BS. Okay? Uh, 
Okay, so if you think you shouldn't trade stocks because everybody you buy or sell to knows more than you, that's stupid advice. Just completely stupid. Okay, the most seasoned stockbrokers on Wall Street gets the market wrong all the time. Okay, professional stock pickers lose to a cat. <laughs> that that actually is part of a research project. So professional stock pickers, the people you see on you know business news, Fox Business or whatever, are all just as dumb as the average Joe when it comes to stock picking. Okay, so not relevant. Next one. Uh, oh, I like this one. Save twenty percent of your money. Complete BS advice again. Okay, like I said, you should save the optimal savings rate is as much as high of a percentage as you can. Ideally, from 50% on upwards, 20% way too low. Now again, it's a good, it's an okay start, right? If you just, if you're just out of school, or you know, you haven't built up a, any kind of experience and relevant expertise, I guess 20% is a start. But this cannot be the end goal. Okay, if you want to have any reasonable amount of. Uh, I'd say agency in later on in life, agency, or if you want to leave a legacy, think about that. Twenty percent, not going to cut it, right? This is silly advice. Okay, don't put a ceiling on how much you should be saving. The ceiling should be as much as you possibly can, while still having a reasonable lifestyle. Okay. Next one: pay credit card balance in full every month. Uh, okay, yeah, I agree with this one. Okay, this is. Uh, should be basic. You should be doing that anyway. This is ridiculous. If you can't pay your credit card full every month, cut up the cut up the cards. Next time you pay it full, cut up the cards. You, you're not responsible enough to use credit cards at all, unless you pay it in full every month. The, the fact that you know this has to be said just illustrates the poor state of American personal finance in general. Okay. Maximize tax advantage a savings account like Roth, SCP, 529 uh, accounts. Uh, sh sure. I mean, it depends on what your goal is, right? Uh, I would call this advice a bit situational. If you have a kid, yes, uh, you should put money in the educational funds. Uh, you should use like HSAs and things like that because uh, unlike children who may someday tell you that they don't want to go to college or whatever, uh, health savings accounts actually... Uh, is a, one of those tax advantage accounts I could definitely get behind because uh, no matter who you are, eventually you're going to get sick. Okay, I don't care. You could be an Olympic athlete right now. Eventually you're going to get sick. Okay? By the end of your life, you're going to get sick. So, uh, and you're going to need a lot of money on health-related costs. So that one I agree with. The rest of it, I mean, to be honest, I like having money uh, in, in regular brokerages so they're not pigeonholed into specific type of spending okay so this one half agree whatever next one pay attention to fees avoid active uh, actively managed funds uh, okay I, this is this seems to be simply a retread of uh, you know just buy diversified low cost index funds i don't know why you would put this in here twice who's still doing managed funds managed funds you see, Here's the thing about managed funds, right? Like what Dave Ramsey peddles. They're all managed funds, which I think is hilarious. He says things like, hey, uh, you know, just buy, you know, uh, how do you beat the market? Just buy uh, the active managed funds that's historically beaten, uh, you know, the index, right? Super easy, right? What he doesn't tell you is that all those funds, active managed funds, if you beat the index... You could beat it for 20 years and then fail on year 21 and underperform over a 21-year period. Okay, active managed funds are losers, so just don't use them at all. Okay, if you can if you can help it, right? Not to mention, like if you if you look at active managed funds from any major brokerages, right? Somehow everyone all have uh, managed funds that outperform the index. Have you ever noticed that? Whenever you see an ad uh, in like uh, investment you know, magazine or whatever, everyone seems to be beating the index. How is that possible? I'll tell you how. It's because they launched like 50 funds, say, a year, and then uh, 49 of them fail, and the only one that survives is the one that they'll refer to 10 years down the line, okay? That's all. It's, 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 that's, it's bias, okay? You don't see all the ones that failed. So it makes it the one survivor look like it's a good thing, but only for a short 
period of time, right? None of the active managed funds ever, ever, okay, uh, hit just the index. So please don't do active managed funds, right? You can pick your own stocks if you want, if you, you know, believe in yourself. But picking a person to pick that's not you, uh, not trustworthy, because they, they have to charge you fees that dent into your terms. So don't do it. Next one, uh, make f financial advisors commit to a fiduciary standard. Uh, yeah, I agree with this if you need a financial advisor at all. I'd suggest that these days with all the fintech you know, apps and sites, uh, you probably don't need one unless you're like uh, already a multimillionaire. Like I probably could use one, but most of you, until you get into the seven figures at the very least, probably won't. Okay. Finally, uh, I like this one. Promote social insurance programs to help people when things go wrong. Um, very confused. Uh, I thought this was an index card about financial advice. I mean, I don't disagree with this line. Okay. Uh, I do think we should help other people, right? Like uh, we're doing that by paying into Social Security, essentially, right? But this has absolutely nothing to do with personal finance. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure why this belongs on the postcard at all. Okay, so that's the end of the index card, okay? And out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine points, I disagreed with the first one was a 401k. Uh, I disagree with don't sell individual securities. I disagree with how much money you should save. They say 20, I say more. I disagreed with, I, I think their uh, active managed fund is a retread, so that's four. And uh, the last one is complete, not necessary. So out of nine points, I disagree with at least half. And this was written by a professor at the University of Chicago. Oh my God. I, I mean, I think I, I saw this on like NPR or PBS or some, something like that. This is, this is just ridiculous. This is why I'm like, y you could learn better listening to me, okay, than this ridiculous level of crap advice that is not relevant right it's like eating a cake where you like every other bite just not good enough not nuanced enough there's so much more that you could learn right anyway that's that's all i've got on this rant check out some of my other videos on one of these corners or whatever good night